Okay, today we're changing the transmission fluid in a Ford Mustang GT 2003. We're also replacing the transmission filter as well. First step you want to do is jack the car up. The transmission pan is roughly about there. So jack either the front or the side up so you can get in from the side. These are the tools you need. You need a 10 millimeter socket wrench, uh, a little bar uh, because the pan is uh, in the middle and the nuts are in the side and they're in. So um, something about um, five inches long or more is good. Uh, your replacement uh, filter here uh, should come with a gasket as well for the pan. And I have Mercon 5 which is compatible with this car. If you're not sure which transmission fluid to use, just check it up online. You can find out which transmission your car uses using a car lookup tool on Google. You just put in the make, model and year, and it'll tell you exactly what you need. Once the car is safely on jack stands, uh, I've just chalked it off with two ramps here. Just give it a tiny little wiggle, nothing crazy, but just so you're confident you can go underneath. Once you're underneath the car, this is the front wheel. Looking, looking up, that is the transmission pan. It says metric on it, and there are lots of these 10 millimeter bolts going all the way around. What we want to do, we want to start from the back here, loosen all those bolts, and have a drain pan ready underneath. And once we've started with the side, work your way up the sides, leaving a couple bolts just in the end. The idea is so uh, the pan tilts like this and we'll capture it into our drain pan. Right, my drain pan kind of sucks because the transmission is probably wider than this funnel, but I'm going to try and make it work. Make sure you have a lot of old rags, either old t-shirts or something, because this is a really messy job. Uh, a tarp might work uh, too if you don't want to get it on your driveway. So just line these around and use them <laughs> and make sure this is close to where you're working so as you start undoing these bolts it's going to start dripping so get ready with this so this is what we're getting right now so i've undone five bolts i think something like that three off the far side two off the near side and we're getting a nice pour uh, transmission fluid is a lot less viscous than oil, so it will come out a lot faster, almost like water. So let's wait for it to chill out a bit, then we'll take the other bolts off. When doing this, make sure the car's not <laughs> that warm because you're working right next to these exhaust components and they're really, really hot, so be careful of that. And also when it is warm, the transmission fluid will also be hot, so it's good not to let the car get too warm before taking on this project. Okay, now we've finally got that pan off. Believe me, there's no graceful way of doing this. <laughs> so here's the filter. I don't believe this has been changed at all. So here's the original gasket. It's quite uh, flexible. Sorry, less flexible than our replacement one, which is just a pile of rubber. Don't reuse that because some are designed to be crushed once. So just a tip there. Check your new parts against your old parts. It looks just fine. Alright, inside the tray we have a little, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, a little magnet there. What that does is collects all the loose metal filings, so you can see it's quite grey. Give it a good clean, you can use something like brake cleaner to clean this. And clean all these edges, because this needs to be really smooth so when we put on our new gasket it doesn't leak. So that's really important. So brake clean it down. Clean a little magnet thing, clean the edge. Don't use sandpaper on the edge, this needs to be smooth. Use something like plastic or something non-abrasive. And again, on the car, clean the um, mating section of this so it's really nice and clean and flush for when we put on our replacement. So here's our old fluid. You can see it's uh, kind of dark red, light brown, which is due a change. And here's the fresh stuff, which is clearly ready pink. Um, with transmission fluid it's really important because your fluid degrades over time that it does get changed. It's not like an engine where you can leave the oil for a while and it still chugs over. Transmission fluid is really important. So as it goes old it goes more brown and 
to cool down the transmission when uh, the gears are changing it's really important that the transmission fluid does its job keeps it cool and keeps everything nice and smooth in there so depending on your service money it could be 50,000 it could be 75,000 miles I wouldn't imagine it being more than that so this is what it all looks like inside of the transmission drain pan you see this uh, silver outline here this is what we need to clean also so where the bolts go all the way around there to make sure the gasket gives a nice fit uh, inside this hole here this is where our filter goes into that hole right there uh, we're going to put the filter on first and then we're going to put the pan on afterwards it's a whole lot easier that way so here's the after, it's uh, nice and clean now. Uh, clean the magnet, that can just go back in its little place there. And the underside, I haven't given it a special clean, just a little once over, so if I don't put a correct seal on this, the leak will be really obvious rather than trying to spot it through a massive caked on oil and whatnot. So yeah, it looks quite nice. Right, the best way to do this, you have no room, you got one shot at getting this gasket on in one piece. It's just not going to work any other way but this. Put your bolts in from the underside. The new gasket, the holes, are, tend to be smaller than the bolts themselves. So even though the bolts are upside down, they're still maintaining their place there. And it also keeps the gasket in perfect shape for when we put it to the car. So what we're going to do, we're going to hold it like a pizza. We're going to place it into the holes underneath the car, hold it steadily, then slowly do these kind of diagonals just to hold it in place. And then we can let go of our hand and bolt the rest in. So that's the plan. <laughs> the bolts are in. Make sure the gasket's super clean. You might even want to put a little bit of transmission fluid on. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's okay like this. And then we'll go from there. Right, the next step is to put our new filter back in. It goes this way in, so black up, silver down. I'm just going to install it now. So here we go. So line it up with this hole here. Ensure you have a gasket on this end, that's very important. And it might also be worth getting a little transmission fluid just, just around that gasket before you put it in there. Okay. Now just line it up there and press it in. So I was wondering why I couldn't quite get that filter in. If you notice here, here's the old one, here's the new one. It's because on the old one, the uh, O-ring is still inside the transmission. So I've been trying to cram this up against the other O-ring. The other O-ring is uh, stuck inside, so... I'm going to have to use like a dental hook or a careful flat blade screwdriver and try and pry that out first. Well, we managed to get it out. It took about five minutes, but there it is. Time to get the filter in. Let's go. Right, the pan is officially on. <laughs> Tighten the nuts to about eight to ten foot pounds. Not much, because you can really strip this. So be careful with that. So eight to ten foot pounds. Not much. Uh, once you've done that, it's time to top up the transmission fluid. So what I did, I emptied my drain pan into these bottles. There's uh, 3.78 litres here and almost a litre there, which is about 4.7 litres, which is about 5 quarts. So start with 5 quarts uh, in the refill and then start the car and check the levels. So on this car, the refill is back here. It even says the type of fluid on the dipstick, which is pretty cool. So pull it out. You might need a couple of funnels to get in there because it's a long ways away. So that's what we're going to do right now. So five quarts in. Okay, so I've got a little double funnel layout there, so just tip it carefully. You will need about six quarts for this project because we're going to put five in and top off accordingly. Uh, one thing I will say about this is that it's a transmission fluid change, not a flush. Now, a change is just where you drop the pan and empty out what comes out, which is about 5 quarts. However, you'll find that your transmission holds about 9 to 10 quarts. 
Uh, so it is like a half change and in most cars there's not another way to get those other five out without going to the garage and getting a proper flush. Okay, the next thing we want to do is warm the car up to operating temperatures because that is the only way, according to the service manual, how to check the transmission fluid level. The transmission fluid has to be warm. Now, we're going to start the vehicle. Now the engine is warm, we're just going to cycle through the gears one by one. So put your foot on the brake. Put it in reverse, wait a few seconds, neutral, <coughs> and these two and one, they shouldn't really matter, they're part of the D1 there. So we're just going to cycle through the gears. should be adequate. Now let's check our transmission fluid level. So checking the transmission fluid level, uh, it'll be the H at the top there. Uh, the C is when you're checking with a cold engine. Uh, the, the hot one, you can see all the holes are full with fluid and it doesn't go beyond that, so our transmission fluid level is uh, adequate. We did a good job. Uh, monitor underneath the transmission pan for the next few days just to ensure you don't have any leaks and you're good to go. So, thanks for watching.